So welcome to 10 Chancery Lane Gallery, to our artist talk, exploring personal memories and expressing vulner vulnerability in art practices. In honor of our exhibition, 31 Women Artists, Hong Kong, uh, curated by Caroline Hatouk. Uh, this exhibition was inspired by Peggy Guggenheim's exhibition in 1943 that showed 31 women artists and who were really the groundbreaking artists of that time. Um, so we are doing the same by showing these wonderful artists and exploring their work through the series of talks. And so um, this today's talk is curate is um, going to be moderated by Celia Ho, who's curator of Parasite Art Space um, and has been actually working for Ten Chancery Lane Gallery in the past. <laughs> and, <laughs> and happy to see her back. And so Celia is interested in exploring the relationship between artists, institutions, and the community. She focuses on alternative types of artistic exchange to enable artists to be experimental, radical, and inclusive, and imaginative. So I will hand it over for the talk to you. Thank you, Katie, for the introduction. I think Sorry. So I think it's a um, very good opportunity to put like together 31 uh, women artists in this exhibition. And for this uh, talk, actually, we will focus on food, uh, four artists' practice. And we will like maybe dive into how their artwork is um, related to their previous like, uh, memories, experience, and personal history as well, and talk about vulnerability vulnerability as well in their practice. So to begin with, I would like to invite each artist to briefly talk a little bit about maybe their work in, involved in this exhibition and how it relates to maybe some personal history. And then uh, further on, we will dive into the connection between the work. So to begin with, uh, I'll just pass it to Java to talk about uh, her work just right behind us, actually. Thank you, Celia, and thank you, Katie, for inviting me uh, here. And also, Caroline, thank you very much to um, including me in this show. Um, uh, actually, this work, I would say, like um, uh, after conversations with the Caroline's about um, what is going to show to represent as a woman uh, now. I mean, for myself, and uh, and and I and I talk with you about this work is not kind of like uh, um, the new work, new, new work. It was uh, remade from the old work. And that is the one I wear for um, Taiwan's uh, one of the museum. And that time is a door. And we, um, I also make the hole and then can see through the, in, uh, from inside and through the outside, very, very far away, the little green there. However, and then when it comes to Hong Kong, and I'm thinking about the questions that I've been uh, thinking for, I think it's a recently uh, few years about um, how if, if I become the housewife, if I married before. And, <laughs> and then I keep thinking about that. And uh, as you know, you know for, for this conversation, um, I've uh, talked with many um, married what ladies and also single ladies and um, for those housewives uh, I mean were for my project for a long time in the women association women worker associations I always um, uh, uh, they always tell me how's their families going about he uh, about her husband but mainly about their kid and then this is a very interesting um, uh, point when I find women's, you know, housewife life is so limited. Uh, their topics is only about the kid and husband. Why? And then, but and then all the time I ask them, do you have any dream? And um, and also, um, you know, how they, um, I mean, is there any love uh, stories? Uh, in their old time, when when they were young, and then I found that it's very interesting. 
their face, you know, become shiny and talk about their love affair, you know, those are secret love they will only share with me. And I think, yeah, this is a woman, you know, you should be very proud of you as yourself. It's not only about the kid, about the, the husband. So, and then I keep that memory very strongly. And then, but I never have a chance to talk about that because I always work with them. And for this work, um, you remind me, you know, those are questions that come out in my mind. If I married, uh, you know, what 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 is something uh, I concerned if I married? Um, this is the the work, you know, telling about that. Um, actually, the video was shoot. Um, I think it's um ten years ago. Uh, no, I think more sixteen years ago. When I still young, <laughs> when I still have the love fantasies, and then. Uh, in a, one of the residency uh, next to the lake in the forest and then you know such a refresh you know experience for me and meeting a young guy and then we have the shootings of those uh, little uh, um, the green you know around the lake and then I think okay maybe I can use that clips to uh, you know to to show what is the past what is the memories of all the we old ladies we were and uh, and then I also put some uh, red you know flat in between it's uh, about all the red we women go through the first time first blood we say first drop and then you stop and then you have stay have the, some fantasies so that kind of experience is also telling the story layerings um, you know in the in the video so I think this is a somehow like, um, um, I would say, a tunnel for the people to go inside and, and, and through the work, you go back to, um, to your past. Yeah. So this somehow is a Thank, Yeah, thanks, Java, for like, the introduction about the work, like, about like, through the tunnel of the creed uh, to travel back in time to trace back memories like from before. And I think this really connect to actually our next artist work, uh, Lo Yok Mui, because like Lo Yok Mui's work is, is actually a quite a long-term project, tracing back like the memories of her parents, how they come from um, uh, the mainland to Hong Kong. And this work especially has a very sentimental meaning because it's made from an object uh, from her father as well. So, <laughs> could you tell us more about the work? Yeah, sure. And yeah, first of all, let me thanks for uh, Katie and Caroline for having me in this show. And my work is just over there. It is a, a kinetic sun sculpture. And actually, the work is from my long term project, which is actually committed by Parasite and created by Chu Chang, the former uh, curator in Parasite. And the project is, my, the name of my long-term non project is called From Whence the Wave Came. This is a project about to integrate uh, uh, the different story of, uh, of, of, of the people living their country. And then uh, I, through their memory, I try to make a map of immigration. And yeah, and in, 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 in their memory, uh, I mainly focus uh, on um, the like the memory of the scenery and also the memory of sound through, through the journey of uh, migration. So uh, this piece is actually also uh, one of uh, one part of the from whence the wave came, and the little boat is actually construct uh, uh, the idea and like the proportion or the ratio of the little boat is actually. Uh, from my mother memory. And actually, when I uh, doing the show uh, for Parasite, I already have this, this information from my mother. She told me the uh, uh, my uh, my parents, me uh, my fa father and mother, they uh, home make a very simple boat that which is without uh, any uh, motor, just a simple like uh, a flat little wooden boat and they just carry a very simple campus then they came to Hong Kong. At that moment I really, really feel it is uh, 
unbelievable for me and how she overcome the journey how she everything just just uh, I, I, I feel feel like ah, I, 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 I can't imagine how harsh it is it during the journey of, 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 of coming to Hong Kong. So at that moment, uh, after I uh, finished my show for Parasite, I just uh, have an idea I should, I should refabricate the, the boat. But uh, finally, I, I just uh, abandoned the idea to make a wheel side of the boat. I just find something in my home, which is uh, mm -hmm. my father re remain at home. So this is the only uh, the hammer actually this the the wooden boat is from the wooden hammer uh, for, uh, of, for, for, uh, from my father and I just uh, pick the material uh, which is uh, wooden so I just cut a little bit and then we fabricate the, the, the little boat from my uh, mother Mary and then become this kinetic sound sculpture and maybe we later we can talk more about the sculpture yeah yeah. Thanks for yes. the introduction, a little bit breathing about the elements involved in the kinetic sculpture. And actually, it connects to the next speaker as well, because the kinetic sculpture is made of the wooden bowl, which resembles like a toy because the size of it. But at the same time, because of different elements that you see, the scaler and the music box, which is like the childhood memories that we can think about, like all these objects are from like we will experience it in our childhood as well and actually for Florence work like it begins with the um, the balls vending machine and then it traces back like all the different stage I think of her uh, journey becoming an artist and animation artist so I would like to invite Florence to talk about um, the work and in, include in the show yeah, hi, I'm Florence, and actually my work is a 2D frame-by-frame -frame animation, and it's called A Stitch of Time, and it's um, actually uh, is an abstract narrative, and also uh, there are four chapters in total. For the first chapter, uh, uh, it's about my childhood. Um, it's like you can see a pinball in uh, animation, and this is like uh, remind me of my childhood this is my favorite things but when like when I grow up now in the ad, uh, as an adult um, when I draw this uh, pin this ball again I think that I'm like it's, it's strange it's something different it's like I'm the ball and it's like something I can't control and it's like um, I can't um, go back to the my childhood again so is there is a different feeling when I um, do this chapter and for the next chapter, it's also about um, memories, but it's also about the current situation that I experience in Hong Kong because um, I com complete this work in 2022, which is this year, this moment. And also, it's about this time. And the chapter two is about, um, like, you can see some structures of Hong Kong buildings and also it's also relate to the first chapter which is some Hong Kong tiles and patterns of some Hong Kong architecture so I want the audience to feel um, that the atmosphere and the structure of Hong Kong buildings and the Hong Kong people living in it like a ball you can't move you, you are separated you are isolated inside the buildings and uh, like yeah, I compare the ball and myself and everyone in Hong Kong, like we are similar objects. And the, for the third, third chapter, it's also about hope. Like it's not, it's not negative again, it's become more positive. I want to bring uh, more like positive feelings to let the people like, oh, uh, maybe there is a, <laughs> something, something is changing and also there is a hope in the future. So I um, put Paris in it. And then um, for the fourth chapter is about the current uh, situation, like my, my working space. I draw my studio at the same time. Um, there is a computer in it. There is my working space and also my, uh, like how I work. You can see the atmosphere is actually quite relaxing. And I want to let maybe the audience to feel uh, like what, like my, my current, um, working status and also my workspace is like not very like I'm although I'm trapped inside 
this space when I am working because it's a pandemic and it's the fifth wave of COVID. But at the same time, I like when I I was working, I'm also f feeling very like um, positive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so for the uh, fourth artist in, uh, for the for this talk is Sharon, and Sharon's work is actually very related to memories as well because it all uh, started from a uh, a photograph uh, they uh, she discovered after her grandma passed away. So I'll pass it to you to talk more about. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm really glad to bring this. Uh, the Crescent Ford series to Tan Chan Shilin Gallery and be showing at its 31 Women Artists Hong Kong exhibition. Yes, uh, this work is very much about memory, but it's more about the void in our memory because it's something disappeared, it's something uh, absent in your life. Um, actually, this memory uh, is not directly related to me, but with my family and more like my family history. I found this old photograph from an, an old family album. So this photograph is taken by my grandpa. So it's still like those little square format um, photographed. And then it is a uh, old grocery store. They used to live there and then also like to support the family. Um, so I want to find out where is this gro grocery store. Um, it is actually at Wan Chai, and then my um, my father bring me to revisit this store. But all I found is a concrete wall facing the train station. So it's completely um, transformed into an like empty space. It's like a cold material. It's like the concrete. So it leaves me a. Uh, of course, like a sad impression, but I also, it also inspired me to make this work. Um, I'm often very uh, inspired by states of absence, disappearing, and the photograph is also actually very honest to the state. I do not photograph the store, I do not photograph the object or the environment, but I use different methods to transform the object it becomes an uh, um, empty space in a concrete mold. So I photograph these absence in the space and then use light and shadow to transform the thing and to give it in an impression or like an illusion of presence in the absence. Thank you for like all the artists like really talking about their work. So just to start with, I would like to depart maybe from what Sharon just mentioned about the disappearing of scenery in our city. Because like actually this is very tied to like I think each of the work because like for each of the work you are trying to trace back some of your personal memories and experience or your family history that some has might be uh, already disappearing or something that you really want to capture in your work. So I just want to like maybe ask this question to all four of you that like for when you are doing this work or working on this project, some some of you might be working it for a longer period of time um, a series of work like uh, which um, when you are choosing the object maybe or choosing the uh, subject matter in your work like why did you pick maybe the material or the medium that you use because actually all of you are using very diverse material in in presenting your idea or your concept so I just want to sometimes like I, I see that those are more of personal maybe significance, but some are more of like uh, maybe related to the culture of Hong Kong or the society as well. So I just want to um, take this as an opportunity to dive into maybe the object that you or subject matter that you choose when doing your work. Anyone would like to start with? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like although the work is much about or relate to a uh, personal memory or uh, family history, I think for most locals, we are 
all very familiar with these local grocery stores. So like in the rapid changes of the city and then their much development, uh, all these local grocery stores that you once went a lot in your childhood, they often disappeared mm -hmm. and they often um, become a bygone. And then I guess this is also why I would like to um, share this work with everyone. It is not only uh, a personal work, but uh, we are honest or sensitive to things that disappeared in our surrounding and uh, how we um, confront these disappeared subject matter in our city. Um, and of course, by like in our art practice, making the choices is um, always very critical. Like there are so many objects in the grocery store. So what would I choose mm -hmm. to make that photograph, to make the mold? Um, for me, like I take the chance to revisit these a grocery store in Kowloon City. So there's still some of them in the city. And you can often find objects that you cannot find in 7-Eleven, uh, in now the convenience stores. And I want to be sensitive to the materials, like these bottles are made in glasses. There are toy planes that are made in, in foam. There are... Um, Objects that are slowly um, that they become they they becoming rare. So I take the chance to uh, make the concrete molds. They are like um, specimen in the city. They are like um, ways that I try to preserve them. So it's uh, material transformation, but also um, maybe it's my attitude to objects. Mm -hmm. I always take them mm, serious, and I'm, I is I'm quite sensitive to the material itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like maybe I would just mention a, a little bit of the connection because, like you mentioned about the passing of the scenery as well. Like these grocery store used to be like right in the corner, like every like street corner and now it's like the convenience store or the supermarket or they took over uh, the fun functionality of these and and these like change of urban landscape I think it really connects probably to both Florence or Java's work because like Florence were not just about probably the work included in this exhibition maybe the elephant in castle or other animation work you really focus on like illustrating the landscape or urbanscape of Hong Kong as well which is like partly I think the one of the essence of your work so do you want to touch upon a little bit about why you're so uh, focused on using the landscape or the cityscape Mm, actually, it, uh, I I didn't uh, choose landscape uh, uh, in pur in purpose, but um, I think it's because now I'm in Hong Kong, and and when I create my work, I actually focus on my inner world rather than uh, what message to deliver to the audience. So when I so, so when I like create my work, I just think about this cur what what I see in this city and how I feel and I want to uh, re like record this current change of my inner, inner world that's why I will um, pick this kind of uh, topics to, to discuss and also include me in my work and I think for a local artist I can't uh, avoid talking about uh, what's happening right now in, in, in the city that I grew up. And also my true feeling in, in artwork, I have to be honest to myself. That's why I 
I will choose this kind of subject matter, for example, landscape. I, the reason why I don't want to in, uh, include too much human or portrait or character in it is because I, I don't want my animation to become like character animation or storytelling, this kind of uh, traditional animation commercial animation work I, I want to I want myself to like my I, I want my artwork to really um, go deep into some mental feelings of of a, of, of a human like for myself and also at the same time maybe some people around me or some some art students like like me also think the same and also you can see from my work there is I focus pretty much about on on the on the um, atmosphere and the feelings when when I paint and I don't think too much I, when I use this color on that color but I don't know why people will feel oh you are so depressed during this period of time when I made and the elephant castle is all blue so many blue 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 and dark maybe it's because and it, at that time when I draw I have really upset and then I, it's very dark and when I draw it I never f uh, write any storyline and scripts for for elephant car so I just draw I just draw I feel very sad at that time and I just draw and then at the end after 2020 I start um, organize the different uh, animation and also different paintings together and then I link up to get link up to the work together after I become more calm and more uh, like <laughs> it's not after I I, 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 I uh, reflect for a while and then I become more um, rational and then I start to animate the work and also for this work is same I also um, it is not, I, I, I'm not very rational when I do this work but after uh, a few months uh, staying at home doing nothing rather than <laughs> animating. So um, um, I become more chill and then I start reflecting and then I just want to re put these elements into my work. Yeah. yeah so. okay. uh, about landscape, yeah. Thank you for giving me time for to think. And uh, yes, yeah, so recently I worked quite a few pieces all about landscape. And I also asked myself why. Interesting. Um, I felt like, oh no, you know, actually I'm still making a work. Um, that is, um, I bet to draw something looks like a Chinese landscape. It was shown in my old practice. I, I practiced Chinese uh, calligraphies and uh, uh, Chinese uh, landscape painting before when I studied in Chinese U. Um, but, and then I, I feel like interesting, you know, just like a, a cycle. People getting old and then now I'm getting 50. I feel like, oh, I, I want to do something I haven't finished yet. So and then back to the landscape. And interesting is um, why I use landscape, uh, landscape to represent something I want to say. That, that is, uh, happens in my other, I mean, long time ago about, for example, like a starry night, a starry day, or the moon, or um, this one is the landscape. Um, I mean, but this is kind of like a very close up landscape I'm presenting. And also even in Parasite, that is a kind of a, like a landscape crop from the city. And uh, also, um, all about this is about you know how you express yourself through the through the landscape and landscape painting in the old time is also kind of like uh, for those uh, um, those guys you know they they are uh, fell in the political uh, situation <laughs> and the back to the forest and 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 in the mountains stay there and draw something to express themselves and then I feel like oh, if I feel that kind of uh, emotions come back to me, I uh, landscape in the city, you know, it's just like, a, uh, yeah, uh, Sharon is uh, using the lens. So I would say I, I also kind of using the lens to to see or to crop, uh, not, not right term, should be the frame, to frame the corner of the city. And I feel like uh, this is something uh, I see something different from others, maybe. So this from this frame, and then I try to say something. For the landscape here, it's not only about the image, it's also about the way of seeing, you know, how you um, put yourself into 
that tunnel to see something, and then you become the part of the sculpture, and the people watching you, what you are doing, why you want to go in there. So this is also interesting to create another landscape, I would say, um, for, and then for other people to see that they have their thought. It's not only about the audience. Now. So I think landscape and the artist, uh, the way of the artist seeing and the way of the audience seeing is a become the sequence of the way of the seeing of the whole world. And that is somehow I felt like um, uh, quite um, uh, quite amazing about how landscape this theme never change. Whatever in home, in in Chinese calligraphy, uh, a Chinese uh, painting or the Western uh, oil painting or whatever, it's all about landscape. Interesting. But now we are just uh, uh, use different media to uh, transform that into objects, videos, um, whatever. So I think landscape is a still a topic I'm going, um, you know, going further to think about that. Thank you. Yeah, about the seascape in your work <laughs> or any other elements? Because I know for your work, it's a series of many different components. This <laughs> is the kinetic sculpture is just part of it. You have other video work and other, uh, uh, yeah, uh, component of it. So not necessarily confined to the seascape, but like, is there any particular component you feel really connect to your personal history or memories apart from the sailboat? I mean, um, I think for me as an artist, uh, memory is also kind of material even though it is not like a physical object. But uh, I think uh, for me, it's just like kind of intangible uh, material. Yeah, and I personally fascinated to people's memory because I think uh, what people try to remember or forget is something really interesting. And also uh, when I uh, deal with people's memory, I, I've, I told myself, I. Mm, it doesn't present the truth. You have to accept this because uh, I think this is so many reasons to, so many things to form one people's memory. So I think uh, for me, this is uh, something more interesting for me. So um, sometimes I, I think for, for artists, uh, the more challenge is how you transform the memory. For me, sometimes I just directly use the uh, transcription and then convert to a script on, uh, in my video. And sometimes I try, for example, recently I'm just working with a sailor and she told me about her story of on, on, on the cruise ship. And she told me about the situation of his uh, working. And then I just give him some object and then she tried to uh, using the farm object to uh, mimic the sound that uh, he always hear uh, during his situation of working. So I think there is so many ways to transform the uh, memory. So this is something I really inter more interest. And um, but in in this work, I try tries to use physical object because I think that object uh, even I didn't do anything. The object actually presents something because it belonged to my father. And this is the material, the, the choice of material also actually uh, echo to the story of, of their uh, story from uh, 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 taking the boat from mainland to Hong Kong. So I, uh, for me, I, I just try not to uh, manipulate too much the, the object. So I think how to deal with the material is something more interesting for each artist because uh, I think it's a lot uh, a different way to, to handling the material, like Java and Florence use animation and and uh, Sharon using pho photography. So I think this is something I, I think it's interesting for me to see that work also, as well. Yeah. And um, for for the next kind of uh, maybe discussion, I would like to touch upon more maybe the vulnerability. Uh, uh, for your maybe from the work because like for vulnerability usually we talk about maybe a body of work that is full of uncertainties giving the feeling of like a risk kind of uh, really pushing the the border of like uh, what is what 
what is being um um i would say uh the insecurity or doubt in it and also um the emotional exposure through the work like what emotions that you're actually like want to release through the work so um i think like each work has a very different kind of uh, outlay in terms of the emotion part and I just want to see like how you feel about like uh, going forward when you are developing your work or if you're thinking about going through your practice this vulnerability uh, how are you tackling it <laughs> Or for example, like for example, for Java's, like you used to like work with the Women's Worker Association mm -hmm. to really empower the housewives and empower the worker so that they feel more empowered because they feel like they still have the value in the society because through your project, they are not just uh, working in the factory kind of situation. They are actually adding another value into your work as well and this like uh, although it might not feel very vulnerable uh, vulnerable but actually we're trying to empower them through it so that is like probably one of the layer but every time I uh, when we talk about this you know those ladies um, I have to say in the beginnings of the project uh, I feel like I'm like a little girl go to them and then kind of like a empowering for both of us. You know, like a poor artist, you know, we're trying to do some project and then, uh, um, you know, get them help to, uh, to uh, talk to each other about, you know, how to make this better or how, what kind of technique we should apply on that. In the beginning, we are really just like a family and to do, uh, to do those things. And then that's why I always, uh, you know, uh, whenever the, the, the writers want to interview I always introduce them and then also show their pictures and then they feel so good. So so this is a, this happened it's not just because I want to do that just just happened. Uh, I think every artist you know um, we we I don't know maybe people feel like they got the power but for me I'm I would say I'm just a little art maker to make art. So uh, nothing I can give whatever the people felt they get something is, I think this is uh, created by a lot of people. It's not only me, because for example, I joined a show and then someone, you know, inviting me at least, you give me the artist uh, uh, material, so that's why I can pass it. And then the, someone uh, feel like a very emotional uh, because after viewing the work, they want to write something. That's why the article come out. That's why there are pictures there. That's why they feel empowered. So uh, for me, it's really just doing art practice. And that is a very important to take care of myself. I would say in the beginning, it's taking care of myself. And then I feel like I don't want to give too much trouble to other people. That is help to the world already. <laughs> So, um, and also in the same time, I think it's, a, it's a also tackle with our own problems. For example, every time when I work, I, I ask myself, what do you want? Why are you making this work? You are no art labor. You know, we, we don't make money from selling the work, but why you are making that? So this is also, um, so the whole process actually is, uh, is uh, tackling all our vulnerable you know, the little little heart. You know, little emotionals. Everything. I think that is a vulnerable doing the art makings. Um, uh, and then I, I, I feel like I'm very honest to the art. I mean, to the art piece I make, um, because I feel like this is the only moment. I can do, and then that's why I feel like I'm making art, even without you know. I'm making money from that. I feel good because I'm the first audience of the work. At least I have to feel good, and that is that is important uh, for that. So rest of that, I think, is uh, all the collaboration work between curator, artist, art writer, the whole whole uh, art scene, or other peoples can help. So 
that that's what I felt like and yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe I just add on something like for for the vulnerability of it I'm not just like touching upon maybe the emotional side of things that we try to illustrate through the work but actually you are trying to illustrate maybe the alternative stories or alternative history that hasn't been that wildly spoke or illustrate in the conventional notion or narrative for example Sharon's you talk about the the maybe family history about the glossary it might be very personal but actually this is something that we share like in our memories that when we were growing up with or maybe the the migration part like it has been a big part of our kind of history as well so these kind of under like I wouldn't say totally unconventional but it is an alternative maybe angle or narrative that you 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 guys are trying to add on like through the work that's why I was thinking like for the vulnerability of it like there are probably different layers that you're trying to illustrate mm -hmm. yeah any to other thoughts <laughs> 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 or um, yeah. <laughs> yeah like um, um, when like m when works about when the work is about memory sometimes it makes it like too sentimental but I often try to have much control or like be rational in that in that sense like not try to just throw out all the your emotions and um, feelings onto the work but when it becomes more control and rational I think that emotion becomes more powerful um, and sometimes when people see the work the crescent void the first uh, impact they will feel is like is rather cold it is made it is rather heavy because of that deep grayness but then um, I also want to use this heaviness to hide like the lightness in the work and to yet use this heavy material to uh, make the light become more kind of powerful. Um, yeah, like this material is rather heavy, but for like new works and reason work that I made, I choose more um, fragile, vulnerable materials like uh, the porcelain. Um, and yeah, like this work, the Crescent Void, is kind of um, a more earlier experimentation I have. But then I also tried out different materials. And for the reason work at Tycoon, I try to use porcelain as a kind of film to create other skeleton cipher prints. It is also related to uh, memory loss of my grandmother. Um, and then how she kind of uh, flipped through the photo album to practice um, to uh, her memory to uh, kind of trying very hard to remember everybody but the memory is something very vague and um, something you cannot really hold on to sometimes and then I guess another vulnerability that we are all facing is the unknown future that we are all confronting with um, and yeah for the new piece is like uh, that if tomorrow never comes serious then I kind of want to push further the photographic medium I try to use um, the pinhole series to discover the vulnerability that we are facing when it comes to uh, dear people to us and then um, how we face the unknown future together what's our imagined future that brings up the vulnerability in the relationship so yeah I guess it's an interesting aspect in um, my art practice and what I really want to explore thank you Sharon 
So how about maybe Florence? Like I know, like in there are four chapters in your work, right? So for the especially for the third chapter, I noticed that it is actually a scenery from maybe Paris or France that it is illustrating maybe one of your experience before, and I think it was a very vulnerable, probably or dangerous. Situation you were in at that time, and but at the same time, from the visual itself, from the animation, it's like still very、uh, playful, very happy, like in a playground or like exploring. But actually, I know it was hidden、uh, of certain like vulnerable uh, uh, memories. So, do you want to share a little bit on that? Yeah, for the first chapter, actually, I was experiencing the Paris attack. Uh, like the ISIS attack in 2015, but actually when I went to the、um, that place in Paris, that that、um, that housing estate that I was inspired was actually a Parisian suburban suburban housing estate, and、um, when I went there, I I I really liked the atmosphere of that area. It was built in. The nine,、uh, the the seventies, post war, like the post war Paris, and it carries with the hope of the like post post war Paris people, and then、uh, there are some playful elements, some playground, and very nostalgia, and also、um, it also reminds me of the、uh, some some post modern architecture. And then,、uh, why I include this in in my third chapter is because I find that some Hong Kong playground and also some Hong Kong housing estates is very similar with that kind of architecture style, and and also I really like the playful playful elements of it, and I and ex- although I was ex- I was in a very dangerous situation. I re- I I I still feel quite relaxed in that area, so I think it's very powerful. And then I want to bring it back to now. This、uh, like six years later, I st- I was still impressed by this place. That's why I want to put it into my work in the middle of my work to like <laughs>、um, encourage myself or maybe remind me that、uh, although maybe this is a quite difficult period of time, but maybe it、uh, is not very. It's not very hard, and there will be many possibilities. Yeah, yeah. So I think, like, actually, the talk is almost <laughs> there. But I just want to conclude, like, for like what the artists have shared, like for the vulnerability we experience, like through the, the art practice, for our history or for our memories. Actually, there is another side of it that can be like powerful. And, That can be empowerment, and that can be、uh, being honesty to ourselves. That like we can through the art making or through the art, we can actually connect each other through different memories, through history, and then we can actually empower everyone when we gather together. So thanks for this opportunity for gathering thirty-one artists together, and then thanks for joining us for this talk.